Good morning and a really warm welcome to Alma Morning Prayer for the 27th of July. A very exciting day as our partners prepare to go to Lambeth at the start of the Lambeth Conference. And we're very aware that for 11 of our partner bishops, it will be their very first Lambeth Conference. And for Bishop André Suarez, Bishop of Bon Pasteur in Angola, it will be his last Lambeth Conference. If you don't know me, my name's Sheena Burrell and I'm the Alma Coordinator in London and it's really good to have your company. We give thanks for two very special things that happened on Sunday just gone. For the enthronement of Bishop Joaquim Bondo in the Diocese of Divine Hope in Angola and for the Alma Sunday Eucharist at St Paul's Cathedral in London. That day we celebrated 24 years of the Alma Partnership. And we looked back to 1998, when there were two dioceses as part of the partnership. And we give so many thanks that today there are 12 dioceses across Angola and Mozambique. We can truly say, Deus e bom, todo tempo. Shall we pray? O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, creator of all. To you be praise and glory forever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation. May we rejoice in this day that you have made, as we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep. Open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will. That the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. O Lord our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Your majesty above the heavens is praised. Out of the mouths of babes at the breast, you have founded a stronghold against your foes. That you might still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider the, your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you, that you have ordained, what are mortals that you should be mindful of them? Mere human beings that you should seek them out. You've made them little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honour. You've given them dominion over the works of your hands and put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the fields, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever moves in the paths of the sea. O Lord our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in this, the gift, in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. We read from Psalm 119, starting at verse 153. I have longed for your salvation, O Lord. O oh, consider my affliction and deliver me, for I do not forget your law. Plead my cause and redeem me. According to your promise, give me life. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they do not seek your statutes. Great is your compassion, O oh Lord. Give me life according to your judgments. Many there are that persecute and oppress me, 
yet I do not swerve from your testimonies. It grieves me when I see the treacherous, for they do not keep your word. Consider, O Lord, how I love your commandments. Give me life according to your loving kindness. The sum of your word is truth, and all your righteous judgments endure for evermore. Princes have persecuted me without a cause, but my heart stands in awe of your word. I am as glad of your word as one who finds great spoils. As for lies, I hate and abhor them, but your law do I love. Seven times a day do I praise you because of your righteous judgments. Great peace have they who love your law. Nothing shall make them stumble. Lord, I have looked for your salvation and I have fulfilled your commandments. My soul has kept your testimonies and greatly have I loved them. I have kept your commandments and testimonies for all of my ways are before you. Let my cry come before you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. Let my supplication come before you. Deliver me according to your promise. My lips shall pour forth your praise when you have taught me your statutes. My tongue shall sing of your word, for all your commandments are righteous. Let your hand reach out to help me, for I have chosen your commandments. I have longed for your salvation, O Lord, and your law is my delight. Let my soul live, and it shall praise you and let your judgments be my help. I have gone astray like a sheep that is lost. O oh, seek your servant, for I do not forget your commandments. I have longed for your salvation, O oh Lord. God of mercy, swift to help us, as our lips pour forth your praise, fill our hearts with the peace you give to those who wait for your salvation, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Martin is now going to read our readings for today for us, from 1 Samuel 7, and from Luke 21. Our Old Testament reading today is taken from the first book of Samuel, chapter 7. And the people of keriath Jearim came and took up the ark of the Lord and brought it to the house of Abinadab on the hill. They concentrated his son Eleazar to have charge of the ark of the Lord. From the day the ark was lodged at keriath Jearim, a long time passed, some twenty years, and all the house of Israel lamented after the Lord. Then Samuel said to all the house of Israel, If you are returning to the Lord with all your heart, then put away the foreign gods and the Astartes from among you. Direct your heart to the Lord and serve him only, and he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. So Israel put away the Baals and the Astartes, and they served the Lord only. Then Samuel said, Gather all Israel at Mizpah, and I will pray to the Lord for you. So they gathered at Mizpah, and drew water, and poured it out before the Lord. They fasted that day, and said, We have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the people of Israel at Mizpah. When the Philistines heard that the people of Israel had gathered at Mizpah, the lords of the Philistines went up against Israel. And when the people of Israel heard it, they were afraid of the Philistines. The people of Israel said to Samuel, do not cease to cry out to the Lord our God for us, and pray that he may save us from the hand of the Philistines. 
So Samuel took a sucking lamb and offered it as a whole burnt offering to the Lord. Samuel cried out to the Lord for Israel, and the Lord answered him. As Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to attack Israel. But the Lord thundered with a mighty voice that day against the Philistines, and threw them into confusion, and they were routed before Israel. And the men of Israel went out to Mizpah, and pursued the Philistines, and struck them down as far as beth -car. Then Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mizpah and Jeshanah, and named it Ebenezer. For he said, Thus far the Lord has helped us. So the Philistines were subdued, and did not again enter the territory of Israel. The hand of the Lord was against the Philistines all the days of Samuel. The towns that the Philistines had taken from Israel were restored to Israel, from Ekron to Gath. And Israel recovered their territory from the hand of the Philistines. There was peace also between Israel and the Amorites. Samuel judged Israel all the days of his life. He went on a circuit year by year to Bethel, Gilgal and Mizpah, and he judged as Israel in all these places. Then he would come back to Ramah, for his home was there. He administered justice there to Israel and built there an altar to the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. Seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked abandon their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from above, and return not again, but water the earth, bring forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread to eat. So is my word that goes forth from my f mouth, it will not return to me fruitless but it will accomplish that which I purpose, and succeed in the tasks I give it. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Return to the Lord, who will have mercy, to our God, who will richly pardon. Our second reading is taken from Luke, chapter 21, verses 20 to 28. When you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation has come near. Then those in Judea must flee to the mountains, and those inside the city must leave it, and those out in the country must not enter it, for these are the days of vengeance, as a fulfilment of all that is written. Woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing infants in those days, for there will be great distress on the earth and wrath against this people. They will fall by the edge of the sword and be taken away as captives among all nations. And Jerusalem will be trampled on by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. There will be signs in the sun, the moon and the stars, and on the earth distress amongst nations confused by the roaring of the seas and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud, with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. This is the word of the Lord. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. 
Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You show mercy to our ancestors, and remember your holy covenant. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies free to worship him without fear. Holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. You show mercy to our ancestors and remember your holy covenant. Shall we pray? Father God, we thank you for our partners in the Gospel, for everything we have learned together with and from each other over these 24 years of the Alma Partnership. We bring before you our 12 partner bishops from Angola and Mozambique and we pray for travelling mercies to be extended to them that they are all now safely in the United Kingdom, ready to travel to Canterbury for the start of the Lambeth Conference. And we pray, Father God, for the conference, that this will be a unique time for all of the Alma partners, for the team from Angola, from London and from Mozambique, that it will be an opportunity for them to meet, to share fellowship, to plan, to dream and to pray together. And above all, to worship as one partnership before you. We pray for the conference itself and we ask for your hand and your spirit to be upon it. And as this seems a time when there is going to be joy and excitement and anticipation and inspiration, we remember in our prayers those who have very little joy in their lives. We do not forget, Lord, those who are without homes. We think of all refugees and internally displaced people. And we think especially of those in Cabo Delgado, in the very north of Mozambique. We're so aware of the more than 800,000 people without homes, many being put up and given hospitality by family, by churches, by former neighbours, and perhaps 10% of whom are in refugee or in camps for displaced people. We pray for all the agencies, all who succour those without homes. And we remember too, those in Ukraine. Those who are hungry. We lament the bombing of Odessa and the halting of the grain deal which could have released so much grain to the areas, particularly in Africa, that need it so much. Father, we pray for 
a revisiting of that and for that grain to be released and shipped so that it may feed the hungry. And we pray for those who are sick or suffering, remembering the very earth itself. May all those who are poorly in mind, body or spirit know the everlasting arms around them and know that their communities of believers are your hands and feet in their suffering. We join the prayer of the sisters of the Melanesian Church from the Solomon Islands. Lord of the universe, you have created this beautiful world and entrusted it to our care to respect and protect it. Help us to see creation through your eyes that we may see your beauty and goodness and the wonder that surrounds us. Lord, we have fallen short of your glory and have polluted the blue ocean that reflects your unending love and disrespected the inhabitants that dwell there. We have not recognised that our lives and survival depend very much on the respect and care that we show your creation. You came to set us free from bondage, so help us to care for our Mother Earth that feeds us daily. Protect us from over-harvesting our natural resources and deforesting the natural beauty of the forest. Increase our love for you so that we, we may be able to educate our younger generation to care and protect this fragile environment. May the people living in these islands grow in their love and knowledge through appreciating the environment that they depend on, through your love, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And today in our cycle of prayer, Lord, we pray for the Diocese of, the West, of Western Massachusetts in the United States and for Bishop Douglas Fisher. In the, in the Diocese of London cycle of prayer, we pray for the Zambezia Diocese of Mozambique, for the parish of Gilet and George Estebao, for the parish of Rio Shire and Alexandra Kadedum, for St Stephen Kellyman and Thomas Chichipula, and for the parish of Morambala and Carlos Chocani. Here in London, we pray for two parishes with very strong links to Zambezia too. We pray for St Mary Magdalene Littleton, twinned with Mongwe, remembering Tim Rose, the rector, Miranda Parr, lay minister, Simon Wells, administrator, and giving thanks for Fran Chandler, our, recent, our Alma rep, who has died recently. We pray too for Littleton Infant School. And we give thanks for St Nicholas Shepperton, twinned with Melange. We pray for Carol George, the Rector and Area DDO, for Richard Gale, Lay Minister, and for St Nicholas Primary School. Lord, we give thanks that these two parishes have been such constant friends to the Zambezia area of Mozambique and for all that has been done through their witness worship and service. I'm going to close with a prayer that we used at the 2010 Wilsdon Lay Ministry Conference that I've adapted for today. Loving Father, you have called us to be workers in your vineyard. We ask your blessing on the time our partner bishops will spend together. Send your Holy Spirit to be among them in their worship, discussions and fellowship, so that they may each return to Angola, London and Mozambique, refreshed and inspired to the place where you have called them to serve. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And the collect for today. Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as pass our understanding. 
pour into our hearts such love toward you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's been very good to have your company today. Please do, day by day, pray for the Angola, London and Mozambican bishops as they're at Lambeth and for their spouses that they may all return with the core of our partnership burning a blaze in their heart.